Good evening, everyone. My name is Nick Samnett, and I'm the teenager who was defamed by the media after an encounter with a group of protesters on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial last year. Before I begin, I'd like to thank President Trump for the opportunity to share some of my story and why it matters so much to this November's election. In 2019, I attended the March for Life in Washington, D.C., where I demonstrated in defense of the unborn. Later that day, I bought a Make America Great Again hat because our president, Donald Trump, has distinguished himself as one of the most pro-life presidents in the history of our country, and I wanted to express my support for him too. Looking back now, how could I possibly imagine that the simple act of putting on that red hat would unleash hate from the left and make myself the target of network and cable news networks nationwide? Being from Kentucky, the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln, my classmates and I visited the Lincoln Memorial. I found myself face to face with Nathan Phillips and other professional protesters looking to turn me into the latest poster child showing why Trump is bad. While the media portrayed me as an aggressor with a relentless smirk on my face, in reality the video confirms I was standing with my hands behind my back and an awkward smile on my face that hit two thoughts. One, don't do anything that might further agitate the man banging a drum in my face. And two, I was trying to follow a family friend's advice, never to do anything to embarrass your family, your school, or your community. Before I knew what was happening, it was over. One of Mr. Phillips' fellow agitators yelled up, we got him. It's all right here on video and we won, Grandpa. What I thought was a strange encounter quickly developed into a major news story complete with video footage. My life changed forever in that one moment. The full war machine of the mainstream media revved up into attack mode. They did so without researching the full video of the incident, without ever investigating Mr. Phillips' motives, or without ever asking me for my side of the story. And do you know why? Because the truth was not important. Advancing their anti-Christian, anti-conservative, anti-Donald Trump narrative was all that mattered. And if advancing their narrative ruined the reputation and future of a teenager from Covington, Kentucky, well, so be it. That would teach him not to wear a mega hat. I learned what was happening to me had a name. It was called being canceled. As in annulled, as in revoked, is then made void. Cancelled is what's happening to people around this country who refuse to be silenced by the far left. Many are being fired, humiliated, or even threatened. And often, the media is a willing participant. But I would not be cancelled. I fought back hard to expose the media for what they did to me, and I won a personal victory. While much more must be done, I look forward to the day that the media returns to providing balanced, responsible, and accountable news coverage. I know President Trump hopes for that too. And I know you'll agree with me when we say that no one in this country has been a victim of unfair media coverage more than President Donald Trump. In November, I believe this country must unite around a president who calls the media out and refuses to allow them to create a narrative instead of reporting the facts. I believe we must join a president who will challenge the media to return to objective journalism. And together, I believe we must all embrace our First Amendment rights and not hide in fear of the media or from the tech companies or from the outrage mob either. This is worth fighting for. This is worth voting for. And this is what Donald Trump stands for. Thank you all for listening to me tonight. And one more thing. Let's make America great again. Had Nicholas Sandman not ever worn a hat or Chosen a different bus stop to even a bus. Had he not been in the news, 
as of last year. I mean, he was stupid enough to understand what, what was gonna, what was gonna actually happen. He was stupid enough to, like, get in the way of Nathan Phillips. And while he sued the media for, because the media, quote unquote, quote, quote unquote, hurt his feelings, which is what he sued them for, basically because he thought that the media hurt his feelings. He decided to do a bullshit video to have a bullshit president to run for office for the next four years, which thankfully did not happen at all. The hypocrisy of Nicholas Sandman is everything we just need to know. And with that, I'm going to pass it to the jolly old man himself because he has some few words to say to Nick Sandman. Now, Oh, 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 Merry Christmas, Nicholas Sandman, huh? Listen, you, Mr. Sandman, you have been a very naughty boy since last year. Since you almost got your people killed, by voting for, by trying to get a moron president in office to run for the next four years, I completely condemn this idea that you had in the first place to sue the news media because they reported the facts just the way they are, and for you to go after them is just not worthy of a present. It's worthy of a call that you will get. Like, oh, 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 are you stupid? You can't just sue the news media because you got your feelings hurt. If you don't like the facts as the way they are, then don't watch the news media. That's all you could have done. Way to take the big sissy route by endorsing a bigoted president of the United States who will thankfully leave office soon. Tonight, you're going to get a call on your stocking. 